Hurricane Milton has taken a turn for the worst, as this has become one of the strongest hurricanes that we've ever seen in the Gulf of Mexico or even the Atlantic Ocean, with maximum sustained winds at 180 miles per hour as a very intense Category 5 hurricane, and pressure has dropped to 905 millibars, which is a very low pressure for any hurricane. So in today's video, we're going to tell you everything that you need to know about Hurricane Milton and why this could be the worst hurricane in over 100 years for the Tampa Bay area. Let's begin with what this looks like on the infrared imagery. This is a rapidly intensifying hurricane and has shown no signs of weakening. It is continuing to intensify as it passes the north side of the Yucatan Peninsula. Massive eye wall, very defined center. It is a 9 to 10 mile wide eye, so it is a very small hurricane, but it is expected to grow in size as it moves towards Florida. There will eventually be weakening out of this hurricane, but it's going to take time, and we are still expecting a Category 3 or 4 hurricane to make landfall in Florida on Wednesday uh, in western Florida. So this will be a historical hurricane no matter what happens in terms of intensity. Most of the computer models are indicating that we will see a landfall somewhere between Tampa Bay or just north of Tampa Bay and then as far south as maybe Cape Coral, Florida. So almost no matter what at this point, we are going to be talking about catastrophic storm surge for parts of western Florida and we'll also see storm surge even from South Carolina back through parts of the treasure coast of Florida and we'll talk more about that here in just a moment. This is the latest her, this is the latest data for Hurricane Milton in terms of intensity over the next few days. Notice how it is currently a Category 5 hurricane, and it will continue to intensify over the next 12 to 24 hours. The good news is that as this moves towards Florida, it will interact with vertical wind shear, which will eventually weaken this down to a Category 4, maybe even a high-end Category 3 hurricane by the time it makes landfall in Florida. And then after it moves into the Atlantic Ocean, it will continue to be on a weakening trend. All these models up here, I would say, are outliers. I do not think this will be a Category 5 all the way through Florida. Uh, with that said, this is still going to be a very intense hurricane, no matter what category it is. Now let's talk more about the track and intensity of Hurricane Milton over the next few days, and this is the HAFSB model run. Very accurate, in my opinion, and has been very accurate in terms of intensity. This model has it dropping down to 897 millibars of pressure later this evening, which, by the way, later this evening, we are going to have a Q&A live stream here on YouTube about this hurricane, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified when we do go live. As we go into Tuesday morning, this will remain an intense Category 5 hurricane and will stay as a Category 5 hurricane all the way through Tuesday night. And then eventually as we go into Wednesday morning, there is another chance that this could stay as a Cat 5 hurricane even on its approach to Florida. Here's where the good news comes in. We are expecting this to eventually weaken into a large, broad area of wind, but that's not necessarily good news. We are going to see the intensity of the core weaken, which means that we are still going to be dealing with a Category 3 or 4 hurricane that's the good news. The bad news is that this storm is going to become much larger in nature, meaning that the hurricane force wind field is going to grow and impact a large chunk of both western and eventually central Florida as we go into Wednesday night and eventually into Thursday morning. Nonetheless, this will be producing widespread power outages across parts of western and central Florida, areas like Daytona Beach, Orlando, Tampa, and other surrounding areas along that I-4 corridor are going to be dealing with the potential for numerous to perhaps even widespread power outages. Let's talk more about the impacts that are expected in Florida, and we'll begin with the future radar. Over the next 24 to 48 hours, we'll continue to deal with rain in southern and central Florida that could lead to some localized flooding. The big story, again, being Hurricane Milton. It will be approaching Florida Wednesday morning. Storm surge will begin by Wednesday afternoon across areas like Cape Coral, Sarasota, and Tampa, but it will really start to ramp up as we go into Wednesday afternoon and evening as the eye of this hurricane approaches areas like Tampa and Sarasota. The GFS model has this making landfall just north of Tampa, which would be worst case scenario because that offshore flow is going to surge tons of storm surge into the Tampa Bay area. And the current thinking is that we're going to see upwards of 15 feet of storm surge in Tampa Bay. And that is still a conservative forecast. So this is going to be a pretty catastrophic situation for the Tampa Bay area and even surrounding areas for Wednesday. As we go into Thursday morning, this continues to move over land. It will still be a hurricane even through Florida. It is not expected to weaken that fast. So we will still be dealing with a Category 2 and even one hurricane throughout Central and Eastern Florida. By Thursday morning, this will start to exit into the Atlantic Ocean. Wind will start to pick up again over the Atlantic Ocean, which will bring even more storm surge into areas like Daytona Beach and Jacksonville on Thursday. And then we're done talking about this, hopefully, as we go into Friday. In terms of total rainfall accumulation, this is going to be a substantial hurricane for many reasons, one of which will be the, the potential for flooding rainfall. The GFS model has a sliver of rain between 10 
to 15 inches just to the south of Jacksonville near Gainesville, Florida. That is contingent on the eye making landfall somewhere around or in Tampa Bay. Again, the worst of the rainfall will fall on the northern side of the hurricane. So that's where we're expecting the potential for flooding to really be, you know, really reminiscent, especially across those areas. Uh, further south in Florida, just south of I-4, I think the rainfall totals are not going to be as significant, but we could still see some isolated, so maybe scattered flooding if you are south of I-4. Another big threat is the wind. We are expecting the potential for numerous to even widespread power outages as we go into Wednesday and Thursday. Power outages will begin Wednesday afternoon across parts of Tampa and Sarasota, and then eventually as this moves inland, it will cause the potential for power outages across much of central Florida as we go into Thursday morning, as winds will continue to be around, and if not higher than hurricane force wind speeds for those in Daytona Beach, Gainesville, Orlando, near Palm Bay, and even Port St. Lucie going to be dealing with the potential for hurricane force winds on Thursday. So if you're anywhere in central Florida, you need to make sure that you are ready for power outages. That means you have flashlights ready to go, you have a generator ready if you have that, and make sure you have shoes nearby near your bed in case there is some sort of like tornado or debris or anything like that. All those are good ideas. And we're also going to be dealing with the potential for tornadoes, which we are going to talk more about now. So in terms of the tornado threat for Wednesday and Thursday, it'll be mostly a threat on Wednesday. There is a low threat actually tomorrow for Tampa and then back through Miami, but it's a very low risk. I think on Wednesday will be our main day to watch for for a few tornadoes. Most hurricanes, we usually see a tornado threat on the north or east side of a hurricane, but that will not be the case with this hurricane. The main concern will be along and just south of I-4 where there will be a few tornadoes on Wednesday. That'll be mostly again from Orlando and southwards, so make sure that you have a tornado action plan ready to go. Wednesday is really the only day that I see a concern for tornadoes. Maybe a very low threat Thursday morning back over between Jacksonville and maybe like Melbourne, Florida, but I think it'll be a low enough risk to the point where it's not going to be that much of a concern. A storm surge is expected to be one of the biggest threats out of Hurricane Milton, and it will be catastrophic, especially for those in the Tampa Bay area and just south of Tampa Bay, as the National Hurricane Center currently has a forecasted peak storm surge between 10 to 15 feet that goes from the Ancloat River just to the north of Tampa, and then all the way back through Englewood. So if you're in these areas, again, take evacuation orders seriously. And you should be taking evacuation orders seriously if you're anywhere in Western Florida. I'm not trying to scare you guys. It's just a situation where this could be the worst hurricane that we've seen in over 100 years in the Tampa Bay area. So make sure you're taking those you know, evacuation orders very seriously. And again, evacuating doesn't mean you have to go to Georgia. You can go 10 minutes inland and you'll probably be fine from the storm surge. We'll still have 6 to 10 feet back over in Charlotte Harbor. Again, these are conservative numbers. They could go up, so keep that in mind. And Clo River through Yankee Town, 5 to 10 feet of storm surge will be possible. And then also back over on the east coast of Florida, we also will see mostly on Thursday the potential for 3 to 5 feet of storm surge from the Altamaha Sound back through the Flagler Volusia County line. So be prepared for this. It is going to be a pretty big hurricane again for the state of Florida, perhaps the biggest one that we've seen in quite a while. Here's the latest cone of uncertainty and track from the National Hurricane Center. They do have this forecast to make landfall as a high end Cat 3, low end Cat 4 in Florida on Thursday. This is again really really around midnight Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So this will be late Wednesday into early Thursday for landfall. Hurricane warnings in effect in the red. And then we also have hurricane watches now in effect for the east coast of Florida. Tropical storm watches in effect all the way through South Carolina. Again, the peak intensity will be sometime tomorrow morning or afternoon. This is expected to be very close to one of the biggest Category 5 hurricanes that we've ever seen. The good news, again, it will weaken a little bit before landfall, but it will still be a major hurricane. We'll be live tonight in a few hours, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Click the bell icon so you're notified when we go live for an update on Hurricane Milton.